Welcome to SWPP. Uh, I'm on the Sony booth. Luke? Yes, correct. Yep. Welcome, Luke. Uh, tell us all about the latest and greatest from Sony right now. So I'm sure you've probably heard the latest and greatest is the A9 Mark III. Um, so it's basically the upgrade to the A9 Mark II. And the big change within that is the new global shutter um, and the ability to shoot at 120 frames per second consistently, which is uh, a real improvement in terms of speed. So really ideally appeals to like wildlife and sports photographers. Uh, it's got a 21 megapixel sensor as well. So there's enough resolution in there to, to be able to pop to work in a professional environment. Does it actually drop in quality at this speed or is it staying the same? No, it's staying consistently because you're taking away the interlacing of the sensor with, with a normal mechanism. So that takes away, you're utilizing data retrieval from the whole sensor. So in terms of like what's available from the sensor, it's all available there as opposed to picking it up in segments. So is it much faster like in terms of uh, writing data on the card? Hugely faster, yeah. So you need to make some significant changes to uh, to the writing processes and things like that to be able to write that information. And then off the back of that, the thing you have to consider is the, the format or the, the medium you use to catalog that data. So in terms of cards, you couldn't use a standard SD card. You need to use like CF, uh, CF fast cards, which allow you to write up to like 800 megabytes to be yeah. able to utilize it. You're almost talking sort of like uh, motion stills. So you're talking more in video language slightly than you are in stills language because it's 120 frames, which is more synonymous with video capture at slow, uh, 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 high frame rate. So. Okay, so uh, for, for people who are not into video, what's the difference between the 120 frames in video and in photo? Yeah, so I guess the easiest way to look at it is think of a flick book, okay? So if you had 60 images or you had 24 images in a flick book and you show a transition through movement, it becomes quite choppy. If you then upgraded that to 60 separate images and there's a slow gradation or slow change in each of those movements, it becomes smoother. When you add 120 frames, the movement becomes a lot smoother. So what you're doing is you're capturing more information. So in terms of sports, if someone's moving very fast and there's slight changes in behavior, if you shoot 120 frames, from that catalog of images, you'll be able to choose one that's perfectly right. Rather than maybe missing a fraction of a second and you lose the image where the footballer's eyes are directly forward and he's kind of moving the ball in the right way. So it's just giving you more options to pull from the data that you're shooting. Absolutely, so much more flexible, isn't it? Um, what about the lenses though? Can we still use the old lens or do we have to go with something faster? Uh, so you can still use the old lenses. So we use the E-mount system, so anything from that range is usable. But we would say this is really well combined with the new 300. So you have a 300 Prime, which is a 2.8, um, and that's super light. It's designed to be paired with this body. Um, and you know, the 300 mil is great for sports, you know, sports photographers. Either end of a football pitch or a rugby pitch is going to give you a good range through that. You can also match it with a, with a tele adapter as well. So if you wanted to go from 300 to 600, you can do that as well. So the new 300 2.8 is, is highly recommended with the A9 Mark III. Is the new uh, camera and this lens, are they all available um, online now? Or? So not available in the UK just yet. So if you were to order the camera, today so we're sort of in the, the middle of January if you were to order today you'd get in two weeks time and then the lens is on a pre-order system so you pre-order that and then that's basically allocated out as and when they are available so body will be available in two weeks time it's amazing any other lenses you would recommend for for this camera loads of lenses I would say another really good lens to combine with it would be the oh, I think we've got it here so this chap's using it here so this is the 70 to 200 2.8 and it's the mark 2 version um, and with the mark 2 version it's a little bit smaller a little bit lighter so it's going to give you that 100 to 200 range and, and reduce massively in weight uh, and with that as well smoother kind of like zooming in zooming out so if you're doing wildlife you can kind of slow down the pace that the lens moves in which will make it quieter and things like that so yeah another good lens to combine with Amazing, sounds very exciting. I, I, I love Sony, I love your lenses. It's really beautiful looking as well. Not, not just working great, but looking amazing. I, this, this is the thing that always pulls me towards Sony. The, the look of this massive, hefty lens, but the, it, it's light. Yes. It's right. always light, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it's, it's amazing. I the love new it. 300 is incredible. So I've actually got it here, so I'm going <laughs> to. So we'll pull it off. So this is what we've been talking about, really. Thank you ever so much. That's so sexy, that is. This is the combination of the A9 Mark III with the 300 2.8. Um, from a weight perspective, I'll hand it to you and you can oh, get wow. it. Oh, wow. It feels like the camera is heavier than the actual lens. <laughs> How? 
In terms of if you're plotting up as a sports photographer or a wildlife photographer, stick that on a monopod and you can sit in front of it for absolutely hours, like waiting to find the right shot. So in terms of the settings, uh, so we have basically autofocus to manual focus. So the option to switch between the autofocus and the manual. Um, in, in this, this is the AI technology, uh, so the autofocus technology is being driven by AI. So I would say the manual focus is great when you want to take finite control, but the autofocus, because it's driven through AI, it does such a fantastic job. You can rely on the camera to do it automatically. You go back years, you know, autofocus wasn't as good as it, it is now. Mm -hmm. And now it's been driven by AI. So it's, it's really incredible, pretty impressive. Um, and then some of the other features on here, you have OSS, which is kind of like making it smoother. And then you have some shortcut keys on the side. So for instance, in terms of how you configure it, if you decided you wanted to configure it to move between uh, focusing on uh, maybe humans and birds, because you're a sports photographer and a wildlife photographer, you can create these shortcut keys that will allow you to switch between the two of them. So making it really versatile to, to utilize. And, and these are all buttons, separate buttons, aren't yes, they? Yes, correct. Yeah. Oh, wow. So four additional customizable buttons on it. So you can really personalize it. If you wanted to uh, personalize the AI autofocus to be looking at kind of like cars, humans, birds, and, and, and another subject, you can customize those four buttons. This is so handy because like, if you are in the trench and looking through your, your visor, you don't want to look at your screen and, and be blind for five seconds. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's so handy. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. You can just kind of flip your wrist as opposed yeah. to getting blinded. Exactly. Yeah. And one of the other things I'll show you just yeah. while we're here is on top here, we've got the option to move between the frame rates really quickly. So if we just switch this to uh, push that in, move that to high, that basically is moving to our highest burst mode. So this is now shooting at 120 frames per second. You can't hear it from the camera there, but you'll hear it shoot at 100 frames a second. It's incredibly, incredibly fast. It's like a shaver. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. There we go. So yeah, this is the latest and greatest and the thing that everyone's coming here today to see. Absolutely amazing. I, I love the look of these lenses. I, I, I've got a thing for massive lenses for some reason. <laughs> and, and the fact that it's so light, like, like he's holding a bigger, like heavier camera, although it's way smaller. Um, like this is this is amazing. I love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. Beautiful, brilliant. Thank you very much, Luke. No I'm seeing this now. So. <laughs> See you later, Colin. <laughs> amazing. Awesome. Thank you very much. That, that was amazing. Was that okay, was that good? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That was perfect.